وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of this series based upon the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. All about the etiquettes of dua, how to make dua, what makes your dua accepted or what could potentially make your dua rejected. The etiquettes, the manners of dua, the means and the ways to make dua and also an explanation of some of the comprehensive supplications that were made by our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we concluded the last episode with a hadith in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu an. He said, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Allah Ta'ala tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is tayyib. The meaning of tayyib can be pure and good. La yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah only accepts that which is tayyib, which is pure and good. Wa inna Allah Ta'ala amara al-mu'mineen bima amara bihi al-mursali. And Allah commanded the believers with the same thing that he commanded the prophets with or the messengers with. فَقَالَ تَعَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ O messengers, eat from that which is pure and good and do righteous deeds. I am all knowing of what you do. وَقَالَ تَعَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ All you who believe, eat from that which is good and pure, from that which we have provided for you. And show gratitude to Allah if it is He that you worship. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلُ يُطِيرُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَا رَبِّ يَا رَبِّ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ وَغُضِيَ بِالْحَرَامٌ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ Then he mentioned a man who was on a long journey, dusty and disheveled, raising up his hands to the sky, saying, My Lord, my Lord. But his food was haram and his drink was haram, his clothing was haram and he was nourished upon the haram. So how will Allah, how will he be answered in this? This hadith contains many great benefits, many great benefits. But often this hadith is talked about to talk about the mawani, the reasons for your dua to be rejected. But let's flip it around for a second and look about the or look at the reasons for your dua to be accepted in this hadith. The reason for your dua to be accepted. The first is itaratu safar, being on a long journey. Being on a long journey. And even being on any kind of journey, being a musafir in general, is something that is a place where you hope and you have an expectation that your dua is answered. We find this in the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu an 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 nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qal thalathu da'awatim mustajabahat There are three du'as which are answered. La shakka fihin. There's no doubt about them. Da'watul mazlum, the du'a of the oppressed. Wa da'watul musafir, and the du'a of a traveler. Wa da'watul walidu li waladih, and the du'a of a parent for their child. The dua of a parent for their child. Look at these causes for a dua to be accepted. What's the first one? That a person is oppressed. And Allah subhanAllah, if you think about this, how many people waste an accepted dua like this? Somebody oppresses them and they just, you know, rant and, you know, get upset. But they don't think, now, now is the time to make dua to Allah for what you want because you're mazloom. Make dua to Allah, it doesn't mean you have to curse the person, make dua against the person. No, make dua for what it is that you need. Make dua for what you crave for. Make dua for what you wish for, because now is the time when your dua will be accepted. Likewise, the musafir, especially the long travel, but all travels, the musafir, the traveler. And the dua of the father for his child or the parent here, because we can apply it to both the parent for their child. 
subhanAllah, that one of the greatest things you can do for your children is to make dua for them. The second thing we can take from this hadith, from the means to make your dua accepted, is for you to be in a state of tadallul, a state of inkisar, bayna yadayillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, state of humility, a state of submission, a state of being broken in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's so strange that Allah Azza wa Jal loves the strong believer, right? Al Mu'min al Qawi, Khairun wa Ahabu ilallah min al Mu'min al Da'if. The strong believer is better, more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. Both, there's good in both of them. But when it comes to standing before Allah, you should stand before Allah like someone who is poor, who is desperate, who is broken, who is subjugated in front of the majesty and the honor and the supremacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when they talk about someone having, you know, their, their spirit is broken. When you talk about someone's spirit being broken, we talk about, you know, like they talk about, you know, the army, for example, and, you know, talk about the, 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 the conscript comes into the army and they break them, they break them, they break their spirit. But the means here is that all arrogance is gone, all rebellion is gone. There's nothing left except total submission. And towards creation, this is blameworthy. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing praiseworthy about a person being like that. Except what relates to ittiba, what relates to following the prophets and the messengers, that's a different issue. But in, when you present yourself before Allah, you present yourself as in an utter state of subjugation, of humility, just being completely and utterly broken, meaning there's no resistance, there's no rebellion, there's no arrogance, there's nothing except total submission and humility. And you see this from this person who made dua, Ash'atha Akbar, dusty, disheveled, Yamuddu Yaday, he's raising his hands up to the sky, he's desperate, he's dusty, he's disheveled. And that doesn't mean you don't present yourself before Allah in the best way. Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O Bani Adam, wear your most beautiful adornment every time that you pray. The word masjid here means in every salah, every time that you pray. It's not that you, you, know, you make yourself dusty and disheveled, but that's how you present yourself. You don't present yourself as someone with arrogance and with you know, pride and with you know, I'm asking you, and if you give it to me, and if you don't, you stand before Allah as a beggar, as someone who is broken, has no rebellion, no resistance, someone who is subjugated, the slave before their master. That's how you stand before Allah. And that is a reason for your dua to be accepted. And that's amazing. And it's from the amazing things that's unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that we worship Allah, we don't do that for anybody else. Likewise, that Allah loves for you to complain to Him. I mean, if you ever thought, who loves for you to complain? Nobody likes you to complain. Everyone who complains, you know, whether people say it to your face or, or not, nobody likes the person who complains. But Allah loves you to complain to Him. <laughs> I complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah, and I know about Allah what you don't know. That's what Allah told us that Yaqub. Uh, said when he lost Yusuf and he lost Benjamin, he's, he's, uh, he's the, the, the full brother of Yusuf and his elder son didn't come back. He was left stuck in, in, in Misr, in Egypt. He said, I complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah. And that's a part of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal loves. So presenting yourself like that before Allah azza wa jal, Allah loves it. That's how, that's how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to come when it was al-istisqa. When he was begging Allah for rain, خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متبذلا متواضعا متضرعا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came in a state that was, you know, he was in a state of, 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 of need, of humility, of desperation. That's how you present yourself in front of Allah, عز وجل. The third thing that we can take from this hadith is raising the hands to the sky. And we heard uh, the hadith of Salman al-Farisi earlier. Uh, Inna Allah hayyum kareem. 
يستحي من عبده إذا رفع إليه يدي أن يردهما صفرا خائبتين Indeed Allah is shy and, and generous He's shy from his servant if he raises his hands to him that he would return his hands empty without having answered the dua and there is uh, there is some fiqh to this that we will cover shortly inshallah ta'ala the fourth al ilhah ala allah that really begging allah by repeating and uh, mentioning his rububiya, his lordship, his supremacy, his majesty. And this is found in the hadith where the person raises his hands and he says, Rabb, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, my lord, my lord, begging Allah through his rububiya. It's mentioned in other hadith, begging Allah through his name, Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Begging Allah, pleading with Allah, ilhah means to plead with Allah, pleading with Allah. I sing, Ya Rabb, Rabb, Ya Rabbi, pleading with Allah through this. And this was mentioned to Al Hassan Al Basri, Rahimullah Ta'ala, about this, about a person saying, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, and their dua being answered. He said, Ama taqra'una Quran, don't you read the Quran? And then he recited from the ayat in Surah Ali Imran that mention. Rabbana, Rabbana. For example, Rabbana, Inna kaman tudakhil nara faqad akhzayta wa ma li zalimina min ansar. Our Lord, whoever you put into the fire, you have surely disgraced them. And there is no helper for the oppressors. Rabbana, Rabbana, Rabbana. He's mentioned this as, a, as an example and an evidence for the virtue of calling upon Allah with his rububiyya, with his name, our Lord. And that's one of the reasons why the Prophets and the Messengers والسلام, they used to make this most frequent way of making dua would be to plead with Allah through his rububiyyah, through his lordship. And another reason is because one of the meanings of rububiyyah is al-murabbi, the one who takes care of you and nurtures you. And so that nurturing from Allah is also uh, something which uh, is intended when making dua with al-rabb, the one who nurtured me, who took care of me, the one who nurtured me with a tarbiyah amma and a tarbiyah khasa, uh, a general tarbiyah in terms of nurtured me to be able to live, to be able to eat, to be able to drink, to be able to grow, to be able to you know be uh, to be able to develop, to be able to learn. But the tarbiyah khasa, who nurtured my iman, who nurtured me and brought me to, to Islam, to Allah's path. This is something which is worthy of pleading with Allah through when it comes to dua, and it's another cause for your dua to be answered. And that's why when you look at this hadith, you become so surprised that this man did at least four things. Each one of them makes your dua accepted. Each one of them, he was a musafir. He was in a state of humility, desperation, and a state of uh, humbling himself before Allah. He pleaded with Allah. He raised his hands to the sky. And Allah didn't answer his dua because of those mawani'ah, because of those things, whether it was you know, the, the eating of the haram, and that could be the way you earn your money or the way you spend it. Because a person could eat in the haram in different ways, right? They could eat in the haram because they, their, their money that they earn is haram. Or they could eat in haram because they have, the money they earn is halal, but they spend it upon food that is haram. And the same can be said for the drink and the clothing, to be nourished upon the haram. A person doesn't care to keep themselves away from the shubuhat away from the doubtful matters and instead allows themselves to become nourished upon the haram. And all of that good that that man brought actually got cancelled out by those things. Uh, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for his protection and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us, to purify our income, to purify the way that we spend it and to purify us from all of the things 
that would stop our dua from being accepted. At this point, there is one more uh, mani, something that can stop your dua being accepted that I really want to mention. And that is to go away from the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in dua. We know the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, the wording in Sahih Muslim, man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa rad. Whoever does an action that's not in accordance with what we have brought, it will be rejected. And Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al adhkar wa da'wat min afdal al ibadat. He said, remembering Allah and supplicating, making dua to Him is from the best of the ibadat. Wal ibadatu mamnaha ala al tiba'a. And the ibadat, the acts of worship, are built upon following the sunnah. And it's not for anyone to introduce a way other than the way that the Prophet did it. That a person and, and here, what, we, what he, Sheikh is very, very specific, what he's saying. That a person introduces something into dua and makes it habitual. So it's not like a, a one time where, where somebody says, uh, you know, they're in a particular situation and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for something. But we're talking about someone introduces a habit in dua or a practice in du'a, the people follow them in it and it becomes habitual for them. This is innovation in the religion that Allah did not give permission for. As opposed to what a person might, might make du'a in occasionally, a one-off du'a, but they don't make it a sunnah. They don't, they don't establish a practice on it for themselves or for anyone else. So, you know, sometimes I, I remember going to one of our shuyukh and asking him, and I said, Sheikh, I'm struggling with the matter. And I'm just paraphrasing. I said to him, Sheikh, is dua tawqifiya? Is dua something that we just have to do it the way the Prophet ﷺ did it? Or do we have flexibility to kind of make our own dua and things like that? The Sheikh said, Dua ibadah, Dua is worship. Well, ibadah to tawqifiyya, and ibadah has to be done the way that the Prophet did it. And this doesn't stop you from making a dua for something that if you didn't find a, a way in the sunnah, you didn't find a, a dua in the sunnah for it. And he gave me the example that you asked Allah to make it easy for you to move house near to a person of knowledge. He said, There is no harm in this. That you know, you just made occasional. It's not something that you've now made a sunnah for people to say or a sunnah for yourself that you stick to it, you know, in the morning and the evening and so on and so forth. It's just, you know, sometimes you made a dua for something. But generally, you stick to the wording of the Prophet وسلم, wherever you can. Wherever you can, you stick to the wording and you don't make it habitual that you add wordings and you add. Uh, you know, things that you do in, uh, in dua. We know, for example, dua after the salah. The Prophet وسلم, it wasn't from his habit to make dua after finishing the obligatory prayer after giving the salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It wasn't from his habit to raise his hands and make dua. And some of the scholars mentioned if a person just in that situation, they just after the salah, they say, Astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma anta salam, wa minkis salam, tabarakti yad al-jalali wal ikram. And something came to them, they need to ask Allah for, and once in a lifetime, they just asked Allah for it. And we hope, inshaAllah ta'ala, that this doesn't harm them. But as for making it a habit to make dua right after the salah so that a person does their istighfar and then they raise their hands, for wallahi, we don't know any sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for this and Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. So it's really important that it's not just the words we use, but also the way that we make dua, the etiquettes that we follow. We follow strictly the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we make it our most important, uh, we make it our most important thing. 
And to give some clarification, Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his tafsir, فَعَلَى الْإِنسَانِ يَسْتَعْمِنَ مَا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَصَحِيحِ السُنَّةِ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ وَيَدَعَ مَا سِوَهِ He said, it's upon a person, it's obligatory for a person to use what is in the book of Allah and the authentic sunnah from dua and to leave off other things besides that. وَلَا يَقُولْ أَخْتَارُ كَذَا he doesn't say, I prefer to use these words that are not from the Quran and the Sunnah. Because Allah chose for, the, for His Prophet and His beloved slaves dua to make, and He taught them these dua, these ad'iyah, and He taught them how to make dua. So we have to stick to that the way the Prophet ﷺ did. And there is no harm occasionally if a person were to not find within the Sunnah or within the Quran or perhaps struggle uh, sometimes with the, you know, the Arabic language. A person might struggle to find the right words or might struggle to find the dua that they want. So there's no harm occasionally, but a person doesn't make it a Sunnah upon themselves or upon others. That's what Allah Azza made it easy for me to mention in this episode, and Allah Azza knows best. Was salatu was salam ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.